people. Can your mic sound like this? <laughs> so the new G Pro headset. I'm really happy to see a new Pro line of products because the Pro series is all about design but collaboration. Esports players giving them a feedback on like the shape of the mouse and the weight of the mouse, the clickiness, the keyboard switches, and the same thing with the headsets. And this is the first product from Logitech that incorporates something from Blue because Logitech acquired Blue microphones and I'm really happy to, to see something being incorporated to improve the microphone. I feel like this might become the new benchmark to beat for a gaming headset under $100. Let's take a look after this. The Master Fan series from Cooler Master has now received a fresh new look with a square frame design to generate high pressure airflow and silent operation. The fans feature this beautiful addressable RGB illumination and you can pick it up in 120, 240 and 360 millimeter variants. Learn more in the description down below. So first let's talk about the price, $99 for the standard headset and $129 for the Pro X which includes the USB dongle that has the built-in blue voice functionality. To be honest, I was expecting hardware integration with blue microphones into the Logitech headset instead of it being software only. In terms of design, they do remind me of the HyperX Cloud series, similar type of headband with stitching on the side, the stamping of the Pro into the leatherette. The size extensions are quite similar with the aluminum sort of hinges that feel quite premium, but there is no rotation, uh, the 90 degree rotation like we've seen on the previous G Pro headset. I do like the coiled cable on each ear cup that adds this retro design. And the overall frame here is pretty subdued with matte black plastic, which again is found on the HyperX series, a black aluminum, black leather, and the silver accents uh, with the G logo in the middle. And if you remove the microphone, you can easily wear these outdoors. They're not ridiculous, like the GSP 670 or like the Sennheiser series. I would use these for music, no problem. The left and right distinction is inside the ear cup, so don't bother looking on the actual frame. We have a separate uh, velour ear pad set, which is nice. They don't accumulate as much heat, but bass trapping is much better with the leather ear cups. And as usual, Logitech includes plenty of accessories like a splitter cable, uh, uh, your mobile cable, we have a PC cable that has a volume wheel, and we also have the USB dongle on the Pro X headset and a nice little carry pouch. Overall, I feel like they've improved on the build quality. You can stretch this thing, you can extend the size extensions to their maximum, and the headset still feels uh, quite solid, which is not what I can say about the original G Pro headset. Size extensions and the whole frame just feels kind of plasticky and kind of cheap and fragile in comparison. The new pair is just a lot more comfortable, much better clamping force, it's not too tight, but it's there so that you can create a nice seal around the ears given the softer ear cushions. And the drivers here are the same 50 millimeter G Pro drivers, but they've been tuned differently. I can definitely hear the difference versus the original. They're more detailed, uh, there's a lot more clarity, but everything is a bit closer. Versus on the original G Pro, the sound stage I felt like was a bit wider things felt a bit more airy uh, and a little bit more soft too. Now compared comfort-wise to my current favorite $99 gaming headset, the GSP 300, the Pro and the Pro X have more clamping force, which means they create better isolation, which I would say is a good thing. But the overall ear cup design on the GSP 300 is uh, slightly better. So the ear cups are oval and they're taller and the actual driver wall is slightly deeper so that when they're on my head and I press the actual ear cup, my ear still does not make contact with that internal driver wall, which is nice for larger ears, but not the same thing with the Pro and the Pro X. And for those who wear glasses, the clamping force is pretty good. I don't feel like there's any additional pressure being accumulated on the sides over here. Nice. Although glasses I feel like are more comfortable with the GSP 300 because the ear cups are not as wide as on the Pro and the Pro X, which means that there's less contact area between the ear cup and the actual glasses arm. As for sound gaming performance, whatever they're doing with the G Pro drivers, they should be doing more of it. Really happy with the entire performance. And this is something that Logitech has been like really drilling down, saying that they don't color the entire range. They try to make sure that drivers do not distort on the lower end so that the bass you hear is actually the bass you should hear and not something that is being boosted. And I do appreciate that. They sound much better versus the original G Pro, which have the same drivers, but slightly different tuning. Um, on the new pair, better definition throughout the entire range, deeper bass and the closer, uh, closer, closer, less open sound stage. So things uh, do sound more detailed when they are closer. And that is one compromise. I did enjoy the openness of the original G Pro, but I'm thinking for a gaming headset, 
closed soundstage uh, for a closed pair makes sense. But compared to my GSP-300, I feel like this one has better audio separation throughout the entire range when a lot of things are going on because they have a slightly wider soundstage versus the Pro-X is very closed. But uh, both have really nice controlled treble, smooth, not harsh, no distortions. Bass is slightly deeper on the GSP-300, but with the Pro-X, you can actually add a bit of bass in the EQ settings via the dongle, and that actually adds a nice little oomph in the lower end uh, without distorting anything, which is awesome. Overall, I feel like they've done a really good job with tuning these drivers to make them sound still really fun, but not flat uh, or harsh on a high end. And the bass is still present and you can play around with the EQ settings without totally destroying the entire spectrum. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the microphone test, which seems to be a really important part for Logitech and its integration with Blue Voice. Uh, but I do want to remind you that this is only available on the Pro X headset because of the USB dongle and not on the Pro headset, which doesn't have it. So I'll touch base on the main microphone section over here. But first, let me go into the equalizer. This is all the basic things. You can adjust uh, different EQ settings. A uh, bunch of presets are already preloaded, which is nice. Uh, same thing with different game genres. One cool thing I found is that you can create your EQ profile and share it. So you can download your friends' profiles and what you're listening to, or potentially a player that you follow, which I found really cool. In the acoustic tab here, we have our volume, microphone, input, and side tone. And the side tone here is appropriate pretty loud, so if I max it out, I can hear exactly what I'm saying, so the microphone is nice and sensitive. Uh, if you want to really monitor how loud you are speaking, or if you can lower it if you don't find that to be uh, useful to you. Here we also have noise removal for the microphone and surround sound, but as I've said earlier, surround sound in here, even with like different settings, uh, surprisingly poor, not as good as we've seen or as I've heard with the G933 or the 600 series. But really the star of the show is the microphone tab, and they've done such a good job here outlining all the different parameters and you can hover over little uh, question marks to learn about which of these what they do but if you're not into all the little things you can also play around with different presets either the pro broadcaster presets from different players or different blue voice presets which I found to be really good starting points and like tweaking them a little bit and what you're listening to now is my custom preset that I've also listen to and make sure that it's kind of what I like to hear. And you can enable voice. So this is right now without any blue voice software parameters interacting with the, the recording. And now it is with. So nice bass, good uh, broadcast quality, nice compression. The really cool thing they've done here is let you record a little mic test and then play around with different parameters and EQ settings so you can hear how the microphone will sound. Uh, and only then apply the preset or save that as a preset, which I found really cool. My favorite out of the bunch would be the Broadcast 2 preset, uh, and I've tweaked it slightly. That works well for my voice. And now let me plug in a different headset like the original G Pro, so you can hear the difference between this microphone and the improved 6mm capsule. So what you're listening to now is that recorded by the original G Pro headset going to the same DAC. So all my parameters that I've applied for the Pro X headset now goes into the original G Pro, and it sounds almost identical. Like the difference with the preset applied are almost uh, not noticeable. And even if I disable voice right now, uh, the actual quality of the microphone sounds identical, even though it is a four millimeter capsule instead of six. And now we got the GSP 300 plugged into the same USB DAC and listen to what happens to my voice when I enable blue voice. All right, so now we're listening to the same personal sound preset through the GSP-300. There's just something off about it. Even if I tweak my expander gate set settings, noise reduction presets and stuff like that, it just, it doesn't sound as good as it does on a G Pro X. And the same can be said with the GSP-500. Right now, Blue Voice is enabled. Everything is going in the same DAC, so I haven't changed anything but the headset. And there's just something off about the vocal clarity, even with, uh, when the Blue Voice is enabled. When I disable it, the microphone sounds pretty good. Um, and that could be the reason why Logitech is not selling the USB hub separately, because it might interact with different microphones and might not benefit uh, some microphones over others. I was hoping to see more hardware implementation with blue microphones instead of it being really software focused. And it's kind of weird because I always felt that Pro line was always meant to be simplified. It's just like, it's right there, it works. But here they went like above and beyond in terms of customizing your voice to make you sound pro. And it's more like 
audio editing software <laughs> instead of it being a feature. And sure, we have multiple presets built in and you can go in and spend some time like customizing to see what uh, each slider does and how it affects your voice but um, it's almost like going against what the pro line is all about. And when we asked if they will sell the dongle separately so that you can connect a different headset to it and still utilize the blue voice functionality, they are kind of hesitant on that. And I understand it because when testing my own headsets, plugging in different things, they sound different. And therefore it could compromise the whole blue voice feature if you're plugging in a headset and it sounds terrible, right? So on that front, I get it. But uh, again, it had to be something clarified because my initial impression was like, why don't you just sell this dongle separately so that I could utilize this voice functionality with plenty of my other headsets, but they all do sound quite uh, different versus this one. All right, good people. So let me know your thoughts about the microphone quality and the whole blue voice functionality. I definitely think it adds value, but being the $30 dongle and surround sound being kind of terrible, that is the only thing you're paying for. Uh, but uh, in terms of its being competitive, the Pro by itself at $99 is pretty decent, but it is again competing with like the Cloud Alpha or the Cloud 2. And it'll be interesting to see which headset people will gravitate towards in the long term, because right now I feel like the Cloud is like the dominant thing when it comes to designs like this. All right, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.